Mist here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Before we get started, guys, take a moment, smash the like button, don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at 3,100 subscribers, but there's still about 60% of you that watch this video that are not subscribed. Would really appreciate if you can hit that button for me. It helps me out tremendously. Now, um, we're going to get rocking and rolling on another Miami Heat Talk adventure, you guys. Sorry I didn't post anything yesterday because... Let's be honest, there's really nothing to talk about. Um, right now, NBA season, you know, All-Star weekend finished up. Uh, Bam Adebayo, you know, he started, played 17 minutes, three points, two rebounds, two assists. Uh, he was the worst statistical player on the Eastern lineup. Uh, only gets 17 minutes, but one thing I thought that was funny was after the All-Star game, uh, Bam posted something on Twitter that it was saying basically like, Damn, these people in the All-Star game don't pass the ball back. Because <laughs> whenever you would pass the ball, you wouldn't get it back. Uh, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's great to see Bam Adebayo in that showcase. Uh, being a starter for the All-Star game is something great to have on your resume. So big kudos to Bam Adebayo. But we don't care about the All-Star weekend, you guys. I know Jaime Huckins was on the slam dunk contest. I know Bam was in the All-Star game. But whatever. The Miami Heat have one goal for 2024. And that's to put another year on that banner. Okay, so we have 27 games left. And in those 27 games, the Miami Heat have to battle for supremacy. Now, the main thing that we're focused on right now is not being in the play-in tournament come playoff time. You don't want to play that extra game. I know Heat fans ain't really scared of it because of what we did last season, but we need to stop thinking the notion of last year. Last year was last year. This year is this year. You want to stay away from the play-in, try to get the sixth to fifth seed, I mean, I think the Miami Heat can even get the fourth seed. But it's like I've told you guys before. I want the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Championship. Round three. I know 2020, technically, it would be round four. But I'm talking three years straight. Boston won in 2022. We won last year. 2024, I want the rubber match. Um, so in order to do that, the Miami Heat need to get seeds six, three, or two. I think that he can get the third seed in the second half of the year. We just got to go on a run. So that's something I want to talk about today because the Miami Heat don't play until Friday. We got the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, we just picked up DeLon Wright via buyout. We don't know the status of Terry Rozier, the game on Friday. Uh, I know Josh Richardson is definitely not playing. He's going to be out for the next few weeks. Rozier, questionable. Uh, we'll find out more towards Friday when it comes. Um, but what I want to talk to you guys about is this Miami Heat lineup, but specifically the starting power forward position. I want to give you guys four names, and I'm sure you saw the pictures in the, in the thumbnail, but I want to make cases for all these four guys. Because as of today, we really don't know who's going to be the starting power forward moving forward in the playoffs. We've seen three guys fill out that rotation. Nikola Jovic, Haywood Highsmith, and Caleb Martin. Now, chances are, going into the playoffs. The Miami Heat is going to go with Caleb Martin. However, I feel that Jaime Jaquez Jr. is the answer as the starting power forward. Now, before I move forward, Heat fans, I know you guys are going to be like, what? Nikola Jovic, he's the obvious starting power forward. And in the previous video, I did say that. However, the playoffs are a different animal. Jaime Jaquez does have a lot more experience than Nikola Jovic. I know it's Nikola Jovic's second year, but Jaime Jaquez did play four years of highly competitive collegiate college basketball. So he's been, he's been in the Big 12. He's been in the NCAA, uh, NCAA you know, March Madness run. He's done all that. He's played the power forward in college. Jaime Jaquez is six foot six, 225 pounds. In NBA standards, I think that's a, a, a guy that can play the power forward position. But he's not only, you know, solid on the offensive and the defensive end, he's strong as hell. You know, this is not a guy that you can just move and throw around, kind of like Nikola Jovic. Uh, Nikola Jovic, 6'10", same weight, 225 pounds. I think Nikola Jovic is obviously the perfect candidate for the starting power forward position, not only because of his size, you know, he's the tallest one out of the bunch, but it's also what he can do offensively. You know, he can score on his own. He can hit the three-point shot. He can rebound. He can facilitate. But we all know what Nikola Jovic's problem is, the defense. So 
we need to see how he does moving forward. And from what we've seen, Spo is comfortable with starting Jovic in the, in the starting power forward position. He's done that in the past, and he's brought Caleb Martin and, Jaime, and um, Haywood Highsmith off the bench. So I think Spo is just really going matchup-based at this point during the season. He's fluctuating his starting power forward position uh, because Caleb Martin, he is six foot five, 205 pounds. Not really a guy with size. Haywood Highsmith has more size on him, uh, but he's shorter. Now, he's listed as six foot five, but I swear, guys, Haywood Highsmith, he's got to be 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, uh, he is about 215, 220 pounds. He, you know, we saw him go on a seven-game winning streak with the Miami Heat earlier in the season as a starting power forward, so he has made his case. Now, I do feel that when Highsmith was starting earlier in the season, those games we were winning were favorable matchups. Um, now, when we're going into the playoffs, you guys, it's going to be the best competition out there. So that's my question to everybody. In the playoffs, who would be the optimal starting power forward playing next to Bam and Jimmy? Jaime Jaquez, Haywood Highsmith, Caleb Martin, or Nikola Jovic? Now I'm going to break some stats for you guys. Let's start with Jaime Jaquez. In 49 games he's played this year, he's averaging 13 points a game, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal. 29 minutes a game. I mean, those are solid numbers, and he's, a, and he's a role player coming off the bench. In those 49 games that he's played, he started 16 games. I feel that Jaime Jaquez Jr. is making a case for being the starting power forward in the playoffs. Not only because of his numbers, you guys, but because of the fact that Eric Spolstra doesn't really play a big lineup. He doesn't play 9 to 10 guys in the playoffs. I know You normally see Spo play like, eight players, if not seven players. So one of these guys that, nor or two of these guys that normally see cracks in the rotation may not even get minutes in the playoffs at times. You may not see Josh Richardson get minutes in the playoffs. Spo may keep this roster a little bit tighter. Now, look at some other guys that have been playing, like Caleb Martin, 38 games this year, he's averaging 10 points a game, four and a half rebounds, two assists, almost a steal a game. But in my opinion, because of Caleb Martin's size, He's more of a Swiss Army knife. If you start Jaime Hawkins at the four and have Caleb Martin come off the bench, he can come off the bench for multiple people. He can come off for Jaime. He can come off for Jimmy. He can even come off for some of the guards. I can see Caleb Martin be that Swiss Army knife off the bench playing anywhere from, two, from the shooting guard to the power forward position. That's why I like Caleb Martin coming off the bench. It's more flexible. Jaime Hawkins does have 20 pounds on him. And he is, he's more stronger in my opinion. So that's why I like Jaime Jaquez better than Caleb Martin as a starting four. Haywood hey, Highsmith. We know these stats I'm going to say for Highsmith is nothing impressive. He's averaging about six points a game, three rebounds, an assist, and a steal. But we know what Haywood Highsmith brings from different than these four guys is his defense. You put Haywood Highsmith out there starting, especially if you're playing Tyler Hero and Terry Rozier starting in the backcourt. So I understand why you play Haywood Highsmith out there. But in reality, you guys, his offensive presence isn't really a lot. His game is mainly if he's hitting his threes. If he's not hitting his threes, we're struggling offensively. Um, so that's why I feel, again, I'm making my case for Jaime Jaquez. I think he would be a better solution. The only guy that, would, that I feel that should start over Jaime Jaquez in the power forward position is Nikola Jovic. I mean, Nikola Jovic isn't that impressive with his numbers. He's averaging six points a game, four rebounds, two assists, six, but that's 16 minutes a game. If those numbers were 28 to 30 minutes a game, I think he can easily average similar numbers to Jaime Jaquez, if not more on the rebound end. So Nikola Jovic and Jaime Jaquez are two guys, in my opinion, that Eric Spolstra should seriously consider starting come playoff time at the starting power forward position. But I'm going to give you guys my optimal lineup for the playoffs because as much as I want Nikola Jovic to start in the playoffs, we have to see how he does in the second half of the year. That defense, the lack of defense that he had may hurt us come playoff time. So this is my optimal lineup if Nikola Jovic doesn't have a surprising breakout second half of the year. At the five, you start bam. 
Jaime Jaquez at the four, Jimmy at the three. This allows Jaquez and Jimmy to rotate and switch uh, between power forward and small forwards. Duncan Robinson starting as the shooting guard with Terry Rozier as the starting uh, as the starting point guard. I know, I know, I don't have Tyler Hero in that starting lineup because you guys have heard me said in the past, I truly believe that Tyler Hero's optimum place on this roster is the Manu Ginobili role from the San Antonio Spurs, being the sixth man coming off the bench. It's not about who starts these games, it's about who ends the games. You can give Tyler Hero 30 to 35 minutes as your sixth man. You have Caleb Martin, as the seventh guy coming off the bench as the Swiss Army Knife, who can come off for multiple players off the bench. And then you have Kevin Love coming off the bench for the big man. I know we don't have our starting, we don't have our big man Saul, but those to me are the best eight players we have on this roster. And then the ninth man in that rotation, you can fluctuate by matchups. Josh Richardson, Nikola Jovic, and DeLon Wright. It's all depending on who you play. If you're playing the Milwaukee Bucks, maybe go DeLon Wright so he can give you that defensive presence against the guards. If you're playing against a team with more size, maybe go with Nikola Jovic to match that. If you need a guy who's just can give you offense and defense if you're struggling in a night, throw in Josh Richardson. That's the great thing about this roster, you guys. We are a deep team. <laughs> That's what she said. Anyways, <laughs> but this roster is good enough to win the 2024 NBA championship, in my opinion. You just have to put the right players in the right situations. I am confident, I fully believe, I wanna hear from you guys. Who do you think is the best starting power forward moving forward? I know we didn't get somebody in the trade deadline or the buyout, but screw it, you guys, love the one you're with. Who do you prefer? Do you agree with me that Jaime Jaquez may be the perfect solution? Or maybe you feel it will be Nikola Jovic. I feel the same. I think he's the optimal one, but he may not be ready come playoff time. Or does anyone out there feel that Caleb Martin, because of his experience last year, or Haywood Highsmith, because of his defensive prowess, may be the better option? Also, I want you guys to give me your top nine-man rotation moving forward, like I did recently in the playoffs. Who do you think is the best nine-man rotation moving forward? Let me know in the comments, you guys. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the love and support. And until next time, your boy Ernest out. That's enough said. Let's go Heat, guys. Enjoy.